hello guys this is paul and you are watching paul medico today in this video i am going to talk about tuberculosis now this tuberculosis is mainly caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis mycobacterium tuberculosis is a bacteria that belongs under the family mycobacteriaceae and the order acteromycetes in this family the main genus is the mycobacterium this mycobacterium has two important features that is the acid fastness due to presence of the mycolic acid layer in the of the cell wall and the g plus c content that is guanine plus hydrocyanin content in the dna or the genetic material that is 61 to 71 percent mycobacterium can be classified as mycobacterium tuberculosis complex mycobacterium lepri non tuberculous mycobacteria and saprophytic mycobacteria then the now comes the mycobacterium tuberculosis which belongs to the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex mycobacterium tuberculosis has different properties that is uh, it is non motile non sporing non capsulated and this bacteria is weakly gram positive now what are the antigens that those are present in the tu mycobacterium tuberculosis these antigens are mainly present in the cell wall and in the cytoplasm in the cell wall we from inside out or we find the peptidoglycan layer it helps uh, the back it gives the bacteria the shape and uh, rigidity then comes the arabinogalactan layer it uh, makes it, it helps the bacteria to avoid the phagocytosis then comes the mycolic acid layer it gives the acid fastness and then the outermost layer where which contains a very peculiar glycolipid glycoprotein and other substances and in the cell in the cell cytoplasm we find the antigen 5 antigen 6 antigen 60 which are very important ones then comes the pathogenicity now before going to the path pathogenesis we have to know how this bacteria can spread there are different methods of spreading of this bacteria first of all there is inhalational route that is when when a person that is a, a non inf not infected person is talking to a patient then by sneezing by coughing or by during speaking the uh, the split or the or the bacteria or the tubercle bacilli can uh, go into the non infected person in the inhalational route it is the uh, it is the most most common and most important route and there are the two other route that is the um, that is by the skin contact and the injectional route injection that is injection of the in infected milk which contains the mycobacterium bovis and injection of the cough the, that is the sputum that when comes the children who cannot throw that sputum uh, engulf that digest engulf when that goes into the intestine that causes the problem that causes the bacterial infection then comes the most important step that is uh, in the path pathogenesis that is the risk factors what are the risk factors there are different risk factors in um this uh, infection of mycobacterium tuberculosis the risk factors are there are two um, uh, different bases that is the who are the main persons who can spread this infections who are the patients who can spread this infections those patients who have the sputum positive uh, patients mainly that is the sputum positive patients the patients who have the sputum containing uh, approximately 10 to the power of 4 bacilli per ml of the sputum when a patient can have a cavitally lesion and these infections will go to such a non infected person who is immunocompromised due to hiv generally female of 40 of 25 to 40 years of age and males of extremes ages that is extreme of the age that is uh, old age at the old age mainly then comes what is the steps of the pathogenicity that is uh, at first at first the tubercle bacilli comes uh, in, a, in the droplet of the uh, split or the cuff or the sputum it goes into the non infected person now this 
droplet droplet bacilli the that's the droplet it goes inside the respiratory tract there due to the ciliary action it is mainly spitted out to the outside but approximately 10% of the bacilli goes inside the lung inside the lung that is inside the alveoli and there are alveolar macrophages this tubercle bacilli have lipoarabinomenon on their surface that is on the cell wall and this lipoarabinomenon and by the c3b that uh, that is a complement that acts as option in also helps the macrophages to engulf the bacteria this lipoarabinomenon receptors are mainly present on the macrophages and this c3b that opsonin which attaches on the bacteria has receptor C cr3 on the macrophages and this receptor mediators endocytosis help the bacteria bacterial phagocytosis now the point comes inside the macrophage the bacteria prevents the phagosome lysosome fusion that is phagolysosome formation by the lipoarabinomenon by two mechanisms it prevent the intracellular calcium concentration increase in uh, increase and the pip3 pathway that is the phospho phosphatidyl inositol triphosphate pathway now comes the most important step in this pathogenesis that is the what are the reactions that occurs when it is present inside the macrophage the reactions i want to say that this when these bacilli are present inside the macrophage they are presented by the mhc class 2 proteins to the tuber uh, to the t cells t help helper cells and uh, this is mainly uh, antigen presentation by antigen presenting cell that is a mac macrophages these mac macrophages are mainly the alveolar macrophages when this alveolar macrophages present the antigen to the t helper cell this t helper cell is differentiated into th1 cells and this mainly occurs due to interleukin 12 which is secreted by the macrophage itself and this interleuk and this th1 cells and there is also differentiation of the th2 cells these th1 cells produce interferon gamma and interleukin 2 interferon gamma is a very important cytokine important mediator in tuberculosis this interferon gamma activate the restic macrophages now there are two responses that is the macrophage activating response and tissue destruction tissue damaging response these two responses occurs due to activate due to differentiation of the t cells to th1 and th2 now this uh, in the macrophage activating response by the interferon gamma which is a very important mediator in tuberculosis will cause different reactions different processes not reaction different processes the first thing that uh, will occur that is the phagosome lysosome fusion because this interferon gamma will act on the activated macrophage also and cause the phagosome lysosome fusion that is the phagolysosome form formation and the bacilli come in contact with the very um, destructive enzymes then comes the nitric oxide synthase enzyme activation activation that will cause the nitric oxide production and the and the free radicals free radicals those are related to nitric oxide those will be formed there will be reactive oxygen species for formation and autophagy as well autophagy factors and if the and if this process worsens that is goes more badly then there will be there will come the monocytes monocytes recruitment and this will cause epithelioid so, mac macrophage formation and this epithelial macrophages will create granuloma what is a granuloma now uh, what are the then what is a granuloma granuloma is a react uh, as is a reaction not a reaction granuloma is a microscopic structure where in the center there is there may be a caseating necrosis or may not if there is not a caseating necrosis then there will be epithelioid cells and giant cells these giant cells are mainly the fusion of the epithelioid cells multinucleated multi it is a mainly a multinucleated cell now what is a epithelioid cell when a macrophage engulf a pathogen engulf an antigen and cannot digest it it become a epithelioid cell then 
surrounding the giant cell and epithelial cell there will be lymphocytes and fibroblast and create a fibrotic nodule and there are and when this and as the nodule comes there are two types of nodules that is a fibrotic as a hard nodule and a soft when the center of the nodule contains the giant cells epithelial cells then it is a fibrotic nodule it is a hard nodule when the center contains a uh, caseatic necrosis it becomes a soft nodule and in case of the immunocompromised patients this granuloma cannot be formed the macrophages containing the bacilli remains because the interferon gamma cannot act on the macrophages or the inter when there is the interleukin 12 deficiency then these steps cannot occur and there will be no such reaction no granuloma formation we will see the macrophages present inside the uh, sorry the bacilli present inside the macrophages in um, the slide in the histological slide now comes the humoral immunity it is mainly by the th2 cells which will produce in interleukin 4 and 5 and this cause the activation of the b cells this b cells will secrete um, defined antibodies and but these antibodies are not very much helpful because this because this bacteria is uh, intracellular in nature they are not intracellular in nature because this bacteria remains intracellular inside the macrophages so uh, these in, these antibodies are not very much helpful but but these antibodies will act on them that is a lipoarabinomenon and can can cure uh, subside can prevent the reaction to some extent now comes now comes the clinical manifestations of the tuber tuberculosis here we find pulmonary tuberculosis and extra pulmonary tuberculosis. In the pulmonary tuberculosis, we find a primary and a secondary or the post primary. The primary tuberculosis mainly occurs due to exogenous infection. In primary tuber tuberculosis, after exogenous infection, the bacilli goes into the alveoli. In the alveoli, it will be engulfed by the alveolar macrophages and it will form a Grohn's focus that is a fibrotic nodule at the and this fibrotic nodule that is a growth focus and these lesions all these lesions occur mainly at the lower part of the upper lobe and the upper part of the lower lobe now this growth focus that is the fibrotic nodule that is formed after the primary infection will goes will form the growth complex that or the primary complex that is this uh, from this fibrotic nodule the bacilli will go to the Hilar lymph node and infect that and that and or include that and that is called the Grohn's complex. Now this Grohn's complex will cause formation of the what formation of the Ranke's complex by calcification. And this is mainly the primary the primary reaction. What is the fate? Fate is mainly direct spread to the other lung. First, second, there may be hematogenous spread or lymphatic spread to the other organs and this primary tuberculosis may aggravate to a uh, miliary tuberculosis also then comes secondary tuberculosis what is secondary secondary to the primary one that is the post primary that is after the primary that is by the reinfection or or where or in the primary reaction the bacilli becomes a latent one because at the end of the prime primary reaction as um, there is a caseatic necrosis so there is no living tissue no oxygen mainly so as there is no oxygen no living tissue so there will be the bacilli will remain latent in uh, in that state the bacilli will remain, lat remain latent in the caseating uh, necrosis and this latent bacilli may activate later on that is the reinfection sorry that is the reactivation and there is reinfection that is the exogenous infection and this mainly occurs in the adults this secondary infection in the secondary infection um, there will there will be simpson's focus see what sorry so there sorry sorry there will be asman's focus what is asman's focus asman's focus is the nodule that we find in the primary focus that is the in the primary uh, tuberculosis primary tuberculosis that is the uh, bronze focus here that is 
Asman's focus because it is calcified mainly and the lymph nodes are not included in the secondary reaction in the secondary tuberculosis because um, as there is a primary exposure of the um, patient to the tuber tuber to the tuberculosis the patient is the patient has already hypersensitivity uh, reaction in his body against the tuberculosis so the lymph nodes are mainly not affected in this tuber. but there is a specific finding that is uh, cavity formation cavity formation due to liquefied necrosis and this cavity formation mainly occurs at, at the apex of the one lung or at the both lung and this occurs as Mm, the ap as we know that in the cavity that is due, due to necrosis due to necrosis there is uh, less oxygen mainly and the apex have the high ventilation perfusion uh, ratio so the bacilli uh, that is the microbacterial tuberculosis get more oxygen at the apex of the lung and so in the ap apex of the lung we find more and more um, cavity lesions for formation in the secondary ones then the secondary ones there is no lymph node involvement now comes diagnosis diagnosis is mainly based on the history and the clinical features and on the lab diagnosis but now nowadays we mainly use a very important um, diagnosis by important method that is diagnostic method that is the PCR because PCR gives us result very fast than those ones than those now comes the lab diagnosis of the mycobacterium tuberculosis mycobacterium tuberculosis before going to the lab diagnosis we have to give a provisional diagnosis of the mycobacterium tuberculosis now comes the extra pulmonary tuberculosis the name the, this extra pulmonary tuberculosis mainly occurs when there is a hematogenous or the lymphatic or the or what or direct spread of the bacteria to the different organs now what you know, what are the possibilities there can be there can be uh, lymph node involvement lymphadenitis where what, what lymph nodes that is the um, uh, supraclavicular lymph node and the jugular lymph node and the or, sorry or the posterior cervical lymph node in the cervical region there can be pleura uh, in the pleural effusion oh, sorry in the pleura there can be tuberculosis in the respiratory tract upper respiratory tract in the genital urinary in we we can find this tuberculosis in uh, the bones that, that is in the skeleton that is in the spinal cord there may be pod disease in the hip bone in the joints in the uh, not in sorry not in the joints in the femur we can find this tuberculosis in the neuron that sorry in the cns when it is in the cns it will cause the tubercular meningitis we can find on the skin now comes the skin lesions in the skin we will find the scrofuloderma and the lupus vulgaris we can find the gastrointestinal lesions and the miliary tuberculosis miliary tuberculosis occurs due to a massive hematogenous spread this massive in this massive hematogenous spread the bacilli goes to the different organs and there we will find granule uh, granular lesions granule uh, granules formations like miliary seeds so it is a miliary tuberculosis it can occur in the lung so then then this will be pulmonary miliary tuberculosis or extra pulmonary miliary tuberculosis now comes the lab diagnosis of the mycobacterium tuberculosis the before going to the lab diagnosis we have to give the provisional di diagnosis and start the treatment provisional diagnosis based on the provisional diagnosis we can say it is the mycobacterium tuberculosis now comes the lab before the lab diagnosis we have to also take the specimen the specimen can be collected in two ways in case of two types of the tuberculosis that is in case of pulmonary tuberculosis we take the sputum one sp uh, one sample the one sample of the sputum is taken instant one sample of the sputum is and the other one is taken uh, the next morning that is two samples of the sputum are taken we also take the laryngeal uh, or the laryngeal swabs and bronchial washings we can take the sample of 
other part that is uh, if the other organs are affected then we can take the samples of those part then comes the culture sorry before going to the culture we have to know decontamination concentration and digestion now what are these steps this digestion means the past cells are destroyed decontamination means the normal flora are destroyed the normal flora the um, uh, what is what we can say the tb the sputum the sample is made free from the normal flora and the concentration means increased concentration of tubercle bacilli now how this occurs in the decontamination in the digestion and this digestion these are done mainly by three methods that is a petrops method in petrops method we use 4% NaOH along with that is equal volume of the 4% NaOH and the sputum in the and the second method is the N acetyl L16 plus 2% NaOH and the third method is the for application of the form formalin and this formalin application mainly occurs in the slide not in case of the culture because formalin kills the bacteria now comes the smear 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 preparation and the staining this staining is mainly done due to the acid first bacilli so it is a acid first stain and the zn stain that is the zil nelson stain is used in this staining we will find now in this staining not finding before finding we can say that the, how the staining is done so at first at first what is added at first we add uh, on the smear on the smear we add the carval fustin basic fustin plus phenol then it is by intermittent the intermittent heating is done until and unless there is a fume occurs then 20, 25% decolorizer is added and after that for the counter staining we mainly add the methylene blue now comes what are the result the result we don't say that tuberculosis tuberculosis the reporting is like that our bacteria acid first bacilli is seen in the stain which resembles mycobacterium tuberculosis now comes culture method the, at first the conventional culture method in the conventional culture method we find that this bacteria grow in the solid media in approximately 6 to 8 weeks in uh, liquid media the time is less this bacteria are mainly aerobic in presence of glycerol they can grow but in presence of pnb that is the para para nitro para nitroxybenzoic acid they cannot grow in a specialized media that is in lj media where the malachite green is present as a selective agent they show a uh, rough tough but colony and the dorset egg media and uh, petragnis media can also be used and this culture media why they are much more important much more specific than uh, staining technique because the bacilli that is uh, the number of bacilli the minimum number of bacilli required here is less than the staining in staining we need approximately 10 to the 4 bacilli but here we need 100 to 100 to 1000 1, approximately 100 to 1000 bacilli is normal uh, is uh, enough for the test to be positive now comes the biochemical test in biochemical test we find that the mycobacterium tuberculosis shows niacin positive nitrate reduction positive tch resistant and pyrenzinamide test positive and now a very important thing here that is the mycobacterium tuberculosis should be differentiated from mycobacterium bovis there are different bases in the LJ, in the zn stain zn stain we find that mycobacterium tuberculosis are un uniform are non uniformly stained and they are carved not straight bacilli but those mycobacterium bovis are straight bacilli and they are uniformly stained then comes the cul in culture method in the culture media we find that mycobacterium tuberculosis is uh, aerobic but mycobacterium bovis is micro aerophilic that is 0.5 percent oxygen is needed 
Mycobacterium tuberculosis can grow in presence of glycerol but bovis cannot. PNB inhibit the Mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, growth of the Mycobacterium tuberculosis but does not inhibit the growth of the Mycobacterium bovis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis there is a very specific feature that, that is this, tuber this Mycobacterium tuberculosis is positive for niacin, nitrate and pyrenzinamidase test, nitrate reduction and pyrenzinamidase test, but the Mycobacterium bovis is negative for all of them. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is resistant to TCH that is the thiophene carboxylic acid hydro hydroxide, hydroxide um, and uh, it is resistant to the TCH but the Mycobacterium bovis is not, it's sen it is sensitive. And there is another uh, um, point of differentiation that is the LJ media. In the LJ, that is the lowest, that in the LJ media, we find that Mycobacterium tuberculosis show a colony which is rough, tough, and buffed. But the uh, but the tuberculosis, Mycobac not the tuberculosis, that is the bovis. Bovis shows a uh, white, uh, moist and smooth colon. Now we can differentiate on the basis of pathogenicity. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is not pathogenic to rat but Mycobacterium bovis is pathogenic to rat. Now comes important point that is both of them are pathogenic to the human and guinea pigs. And, and when we want to differentiate the mycobacterium tuberculosis from the non tubercular mycobacteria, we find that this non tubercular mycobacteria are positive for aryl sulfate test, twin 80 test, and the catalyst test. But this mycobacterium tuberculosis is not positive for any one of them. Now comes the animal pathogenicity testing. In animal pathogenicity testing, we find that the that that is when when we inject the mycobacterium tuberculosis antigen or the bacilli or the uh, sputum or the specimen in from or from the culture in our guinea pig then uh, then the guinea pig where uh, then at the place where we inject the now comes the animal pathogenicity testing. In animal pathogenicity testing, we mainly inject the sample or from the culture in a guinea pig. And where we inject and uh, then what happens that at the point at the site of the injection and the site of the injection, the um, there will be form formation of a nodule as a formation of the lesion, nodular lesion. Then the uh, guinea, uh, then the guinea pig uh, will die. And after the death of the guinea, uh, guinea pig, if we uh, do autopsy, we will find that the lymph nodes are enlarged. That is, the lymph node has been em involved in this uh, reaction, and there will be nodular lesion at the site of the inoculation, and there will be uh, el uh, and there will be nodular lesions on the different organs also. Now comes the typing and there is a serotyping depend, uh, based on the antigens and antibodies. There is phenotyping and uh, the genotype. The, pheno the phenotype is mainly based on bacteriocin and bacteriophage and the genotype uh, genotyping is mainly done depending on the PCR. This PCR can also be used for diagnosis of the mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now comes the diagnosis of the latent tuberculosis. Before going to the latent tuberculosis, we have to know what is latent, when it becomes latent. When it becomes latent when uh, there is a caseating necrosis, becomes liquefied necrosis and the sorry the caseating necrosis. In the caseating necrosis, there is less oxygen supply as the bacteria is uh, aer aerobic one so the bacteria cannot um, cause any pathogenesis in that oxygen deficient uh, medium so they remain latent in the macrophages now how we can find what is the diagnosis this latent uh, tuberculosis is mainly diagnosed by uh, by different test mainly two tests that is the tuberculin test or the or Montreux test and the interferon gamma assay. The in the tuberculin test, we mainly use two antigen that is the 
old tuberculin antigen and purified protein derived antigen the old and the dose that we apply has a tuberculin unit what is one tuberculin unit one tuberculin unit is 0.01 ml of old uh, tuberculin antigen and 0.00002 milligram of purified protein derived antigen now comes what is the application procedure the this antigen that is that old tuberculin antigen or purified protein derived antigen 0.1 ml containing one tuberculin unit of purified protein derived antigen is injected in the anterior aspect of the forearm in the anterior aspect of the forearm now point the point comes there what is the result there will be induration and erythema formation we have to see the diameter of the induration if the di if the diameter is greater than 10 millimeter then we can say that this reaction is positive that is the test is tuberculin test is positive and or the Montreux test is positive if the reaction if the di diameter is 6 to 9 millimeter then we have to say that this reaction may be positive or may be negative and if it is less than 5 then it is always negative now uh, we have to know where we have to apply this reaction what is the application we can use this test as a as a diagnostic test and or the or a, di or a diagnostic marker and as a what as a epidemiological marker in the epidemiologic of in case of adult we uh, we use it as a epidemiological marker in case of children we use it as a diagnostic marker in case of adult it is seen that this uh, bacteria in case of adult it is seen that when uh, this bacteria uh, sorry this tuberculin test is not positive when the bacteria is in active state this test is positive mainly in when the bacteria uh, has infect the body at present or uh, in the uh, or in previous days there are two types of the studies that is prevalence that is a cross-sectional study where we see how many how many reactors are there and there is a second one that is the inci uh, that is the incidence where we find how many uh, persons are infected in a certain period of time now comes in children it shows the active so shows the active state so we can use this test as a diagnostic marker and then uh, then we have to know what are the false positive and what are the false negative reactions false positive mainly occur after the bcg vaccination and non tuberculous uh, mycobacteria infection and the false positive mainly occur and the false positive mainly occur uh, sorry i told the false positive and the false negative mainly occur in what when it is the advanced stage of the TB in case of the miliary tuberculosis and in case of immunocompromised patients mainly it occurs. Now comes what? Now comes interferon gamma assay. It is advanced uh, process of um, latent tuberculosis diagnosis, but this in interferon gamma assay is uh, much more better than the tuberculin test because it is mainly in vitro where we mainly activate that uh, where we mainly irritate or activate the T cells collecting from the patient and these T cells secrete the inter interferon gamma and we uh, give some results and we not sorry we not give that uh, test give some results this interferon uh, gamma assay is a uh, very advanced and uh, not only this and this uh, uh, tuberculin test and interferon gamma assay are much more advanced because uh, there is only one bacilli or two, one to two bacilli are uh, sufficient for test to be positive. One thing I missed before that is uh, hemoptysis. In the secondary, when there is a secondary tuberculosis, the alveolar wall is damaged uh, a lot. So, the blood vessels are exposed. The blood will come in the alveolar sacs and that will be cuffed out in the sputum. So, there will be blood stains put on the hemophilus now comes the summary in the summary we have to know what 
at first there is the the bacilli come and cause infection that is the primary infection this primary infection mainly occurs in the lung from lung this primary infection will cause Grohn's focus from Grohn's focus there will be Grohn's complex from Grohn's complex there will be Ranke's complex and this Ranke's complex may be may form a scar and can be cured in the Grohn's focus from Grohn's focus to Grohn's complex from Grohn's complex it may be in the latent form from latent form there will be reactivation of the bacilli and there may be exogenous reinfection this reactivation and reinfection may cause secondary secondary tuberculosis the secondary tuberculosis will cause cavity formation because uh, there is much more effect of this bacteria and there will be cavity formation due to liquefied necrosis from and as there is a cavity form, form, formation there will be much more bacilli in the sputum there will be much more chances of the um, best of the patient to be infectious and there are other extra pulmonary findings that of the of the tuberculosis okay so now we i am going to finish the video this video is too long thanks for watching if you like this video please give a huge thumbs up share it with your friends so that they can know the, the about the tuberculosis with no with your non medical friends so that they can know about the tuberculosis comment in the comment section that how the video is and please subscribe my channel for new more awesome videos like this and entertainment videos bye